Aloha friends, welcome back. This afternoon we decided to come by our property and just take a walk around and see what is happening here and also share with you what have been happening here for the last three weeks I think. Last time you saw us we began bulldozing and we were very excited and so today we just wanted to share with you some of the things that we've been up to. So come on with us for a walk. So first off bulldozing. Ryan you want to talk about that? Yeah, so developing a property like this is sure to come with setbacks and challenges. Um, a lot of those center around who you hire to do work for you. Uh, we try to hire those that have good references, have, you know, proven themselves. And so we were really excited when we found this gentleman who had decades of experience and we'd heard really good things from the neighbors. So when we interviewed this gentleman for bulldozing our property, um, I asked him, what his schedule was like for example well he told me at that time it was about a six to eight week waiting list and then i asked him once he's on the site um what days does he work does he work monday through friday what does he work he told me no i work seven days a week i thought wow this guy is really you know at it you know what i mean so i took the opportunity to tell him about the seventh day sabbath and ask him if he could take a break from working on our property on saturdays and he agreed um However, six weeks passed and the gentleman uh, came with his dozer and uh, he began to work. But um, unfortunately, over the last um, three weeks or so, we've actually had him on site only about four days. And so uh, we are excited about the progress that's been made, but it's been a whole lot less than we anticipated. We thought we would have been planting our, our vegetables and, and fruit trees a couple of weeks ago. We thought we'd already be fencing. We thought we'd already be doing all kinds of things. In fact, I took a week off of work because I thought that the work that was being done here would be uh, proceeding at such a fast pace that I better mm -hmm. take time off and so that I could kind of supervise and make sure everything was done. Yeah, and here we are. He, yep, here we are <laughs> three, three weeks later. And for the most part, this dozer has just sat there for the whole time. Um, or at least most of the time. So that's been disappointing. Yeah, so we've been kind of a little bit discouraged about this. Yeah, developing a property, of course, is challenging. And um, <gasps> did you see it? I think he came and bulldozed you guys. <laughs> We're seeing this for the first time. This is something else. Look at this. He actually did come. Look at that. Uh, we're actually, we showed up at the property this evening and it looked just like it always looked and it, the thing was parked just as it's always parked. <laughs> but um, as we made our way down here, look at that. Huh. He snuck in and did some work. Well, what a blessing. I know. <laughs> I wonder what else we'll find on this walk. Yeah. Well, that sure lifts up, up our spirits. <laughs> right, Ryan? Yeah, that's good news. Because we haven't seen him on the property for several days now. Wow, praise the Lord yeah amazing <laughs> well anything else we want to say about the bulldozing well bulldozing in general is really an important part of um you know developing your country homestead i mean it kind of it kind of sets things up as far as are you going to have an easy time maintaining the property or are you going to have a rough time maintaining the property in the future and then also are you going to have problems with um, erosion and water issues with your house or other things like that flooding and so bulldozing it's really essential that you get the right people or at least skilled people to do the work for you yeah. um, and here in Hawaii um, the prices for bulldozing and the equipment you need to hire it really depends upon the area that you're doing the work in for example if you're in the Puna district where we used to live and farm um, there you need a D9, a real big dozer, and you're going to pay about $10,000 an acre for bulldozing because the underneath the earth there, you've got a, a basis of hard lava. Here, it's a very different story. The, the lava is so deep that essentially you've got too much dirt right <laughs> and so you want smaller bulldozers because if you bring one of those big d9s here the problem is is your dozer is actually going to sink in the earth especially at certain times of the year when the earth is is moist like in the rainy season so you want smaller dozers here 
and um, as a result of them just kind of working deep earth they um, it's not as expensive uh, we're not really sure just yet based on our own experience what it's going to cost but hopefully it'll it should cost less than 2,000 an acre um, so the land here is extremely expensive compared to the other land but there's the trade-off of much higher bulldozing cost uh, right. when you're developing and speaking of delays sometimes you know or most of the times we think that delays are bad we don't like to wait nobody likes to wait um, and we get impatient but sometimes delays could be a blessing um, with all this bulldozing there are so many decisions that we have to make and you need time to decide all of those things right and we also need to purchase a mower we need to build a shed for that mower here and so maybe this is buying us some time time does help of course we're very anxious to get our food in the ground we have some concerns about food security and providing food for our family in light of this less than stable environment that we see in the world today but also all of this bulldozing and developing of the property has been kind of overwhelming uh, for the most part because again there's so many decisions to make and you don't want to make the wrong decision yeah some of the decisions we've been faced with just a few of them is um, for example developing um, selecting and developing house sites yeah. um, how to position the house we want to make sure yeah. that we position for optimal um, solar power right in relation to the sun yeah. for breezes trade winds from the ocean you want everything to be lined up you want to design the home in a way that it can take advantage of all this you want to try to figure out where can your orchards go where it's not going to block let's say the the sun or the wind from your house yeah. um, I mean that's just beginning I mean then you got to figure out where is the driveway gonna go um, there's some major expenses involved in that if he's gonna for example lay out the house site for us you know are we going to be happy with that when it comes time to build or are we going to be determining that you know really there was a better one over here and so you know you just have this pressure to make decisions kind of rapid fire and it can be quite challenging yeah here we have a neat spot on the property this is one corner of our property it has a beautiful jungle here this looks pretty freshly bulldozed yeah, it looks like he's been moving things here and yeah. did he take down that big tree here yeah oh wow that's neat look at all that loose dirt it looks so nice so this is part of the tree right here oh that's the tree this oh, is a wow. big drop off you can see a bunch of junk that he threw down there oh wow oh wow that is so steep this is a portion of the property that i really like um, this is the edge near the edge of the property and this is a jungle which goes down several hundred feet into a really large uh, all year round stream. And so we've got these beautiful palms and a lot of really neat plants that you would normally find in your nursery in the mainland for sale. You know, some of these like over here that have um, purple undersides and you've got some Office. beautiful uh, large viney plants that mm -hmm. um, actually grow in a much smaller scale in most people's homes or house plants. It's just really a, a neat environment. And this is about as jungly as it gets. A lot of native birds, it's just really a nice place. So this is the area that has been bulldozed the most. And this way around is where we're thinking to put the house, where Ryan is walking. So here we brought some stakes in and just kind of staked out an area that we think will be our house and so what we're trying to accomplish here is really have some space from the neighboring yard even though it's very beautiful we want to be you know good distance away from them and also we wanted to capture the trade winds and the sunshine and we found out that the trade winds are coming from that side which is northeast and here is going to be the south for our solar panels that is very important so we had to think of all the different details of the house and how the rooms even inside the house will be laid out to make sure that our house will have natural breezes going through, that it will have enough sunlight in every room. And so this is what we're working with. So this will be kind of the backyard where we'll have some gardens here and we have a beautiful view 
of palm trees and neighbors' horses. I don't know if you can see them. Maybe I'll zoom in, see there. There's one horse and they have another one there. And we thought that this would be a beautiful place for gardens and for just, you know, a nice lanai here. This is the south here. And then turning around, this part of the house will be facing the ocean. And this will be kind of the north side or more of a northeast side here. So we're trying to figure out how to still capture the light here because obviously on the north side you don't get a lot of sunshine, you know, direct sunshine in the windows. Another thing we're working on is the slant of the house. Right now it looks straight to you, but actually if you stand straight, it looks like this. See where the line is? And we didn't want our house to look straight because it looks mostly into the forest. We wanted to capture all of that beauty of the ocean. So we actually slanted it about 15 degrees this way. And that way it captures the entire view. So it's always kind of interesting to figure out how to position the house and how to even make the house look inside. So you can capture all of these good things like sunlight and breezes. And we did that in our previous home and it worked out wonderfully. We had always a cool house and our solar panels were facing straight to the south and it was working great. Yeah, so our intention is to not need air conditioning. And we succeeded in doing that in actually a much uh, hotter area of the island. And so we believe that we will be able to do the same thing here. Hi guys, what are you up to? You're drawing some pictures on top of the car? Nice! So here we actually have a huge tree that we had cut down this week. So this is the tree. It's a monster. It's really big. Yeah, so we had two big gunpowder trees over here. And the biggest of these, this one, was actually about somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 plus feet. And so it was just inhibiting us from doing what we wanted to do over here, which is we're planning on cleaning out this hillside and making something we call a food forest. So it's sort of a, a low maintenance um, food ecosystem where we have all kinds of food producing plants growing together in a forest like environment. So we needed to get rid of these and they were also sort of threatening our neighbor's fence. And so we were fortunate enough to be able to hire some friends who gave us a good deal and we were able to cut these trees down. Yeah, praise um, the Lord. Normally these trees are very costly, um, thousands of dollars each to cut down, but we were able to, um, to get it done at about a fraction of the price. And so that was a real blessing. Yes, and this tree was so huge that the guys who were cutting it, they were pretty much not able to actually cut it all the way down. And so a good providence that happened is that our bulldozer man came that day and they were able to ask him, to help them pull it with a dozer. And so they weakened the tree and pulled it and this is what they got. So we're just so happy that we only have a little stump instead of a huge tree still standing up. And this is the stump of the tree. Yeah, so this is the bigger of the two. This is 14 and a half feet around. Yes, we had two of them. And we had some other ones right there. And by the way, this is a beautiful taro field that our neighbor has. It's always nice to look at. And that's, of course, the natal, native staple of the Hawaiian people. That's right. So now, what are some of our plans going forward? Well, when you start bulldozing, one of the most important things to do here is you've got to figure out a way to maintain it. Stuff grows very, very quickly here. And so a property will overgrow in a short period of time without maintenance. So the goal is to make this property something that can be maintained which means that we need two things. Number one, we need a mower and preferably a big one mm -hmm. uh, to be able to maintain this without too many hours per week. And then second, we need to put up some kind of fencing. And that's important because um, there's a lot of wild pigs and boars around here. Yes. And if you're planting, they're gonna be disturbing it and, and digging it up every night. And so, uh, so that's the second thing. So and we then, have an airplane flying over, so it might have some noise. <laughs> And um, the next thing we need to do is we need to begin planting. We're, we're eager to begin planting food for the family. Uh, we're gonna, we've got plans for so much uh, planting, uh, but we're gonna start off with prioritizing those things that can produce large amounts of food within a one year period of time. 
And so some of those things, we'll, we'll do a whole video on it later, but we're gonna um, begin with planting sweet potatoes. We're gonna begin by planting cassava root, um, also known as yuca or um, tapioca. We're gonna start planting um, bananas, papayas. lots of bananas, papayas, different kinds. Secondarily, we're gonna start adding in a few of uh, a few trees that really require more time, but they produce such large quantities of food um, that uh, we just need to get a head start and get them in the ground as soon as possible. And uh, one of those examples would be breadfruit mm -hmm. um, and along with that avocados. So these are some of the things that we're going to be working on in the near future and hopefully we can get there soon. Yeah. And so last week we actually purchased two big breadfruit trees, a lot bigger than what we found in the jungle here. And they're a lot more established. Yeah. And also this week, while our friends were cutting these trees, we know that they have little farms of their own. And we have asked them if they would share with us some of the cuttings that they have of things like sweet potatoes, specifically purple sweet potatoes that grow very well here and cassava root. And so our friend brought us cassava root and sweet potatoes. And so we're um, propagating those. We cut it up in little pieces, just like we told you before, a lot of things in Hawaii grow just by cuttings, just by little sticks that you stick in the ground. And another providence that we thought was really neat is that our friend told us that those cuttings that he gave us were actually from the plants on his property that we have given him cuttings many years ago from our property. And this is actually the second time that somebody told us this. We also got cuttings off, um, what is it called? Tongan spinach. Tongan spinach that we gave to another friend while they were visiting our previous property. And many years later, now they shared those with us and said they're actually from your property. So I thought that that was really neat. A reminder of the value of sharing. Yes, it will always come back to you. Now, um, any other plants we have? What about a shed? That's right. So we're going to be buying a mower. Um, unfortunately, to get a, a large mower for a property this size, it's going to cost quite a bit of money. And uh, so we need to protect that and so protect it from the elements, protect it from potential thieves and so we'll likely need to um, build at least some kind of a shed to house garden tools and and uh, lawn equipment so that's something else we'll have to do in the near future yeah so these are the plans these are the happenings that have been happening with us for the last three weeks and we obviously were so busy and overwhelmed we didn't have really time to sit down and make a video so we thought we would make one today and post it soon. So any last words, Ryan? Yeah, I would say for those of you who are interested in this kind of lifestyle, that the best way to get ahead is to simply get started. Get started with what yeah. you have today. Make a decision, start to study. The learning is free. There's all kinds of videos. There's all kinds of books. Um, get started today. Yes, don't um, wait until everything will be out of the way and everything will be perfect. In fact, much of the stuff that we're doing right now, stuff that we're telling you we're doing in coming weeks, we don't even have the resources yet to do it, but we're doing it anyway, and we're going to make it happen by God's grace. That's right. Amen. Well, guys, thank you for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. And if you would like to see more videos like this, go ahead and subscribe. Click notification bell so you don't miss any of our new videos. And we'll see you next time. Aloha and God bless.